Hi, it's Tara Green and it's October the 18th and this is what the astrology aspects look like today. Yes, and you might be saying, oh my God, that is really busy and it certainly is. Now the moon, the moon is always the moods of the people. So wherever the moon is, it's how we're feeling because the moon, of course, always governs water, pulls water, pulls our emotions, pulls on our emotional body. We're 70% water. So of course, when the moon is in Scorpio, which is the deepest, most intense, most powerful, most secret, most shadowy, most deepest psychologically uh, moon because it relates to the soul, okay? To the uh, deep underground. So in the death, reverse, sex, money, power uh, area that Scorpio rules, sorry about that. Um, we're being pulled deep into that. And so we tend to deal with our shadows, have other people come up and appear as mirrors of our own shadows. So the moon sextiles Venus in Virgo. Venus is weak in Virgo. That's early in the morning. Um, sextiles are a nice aspect. It will later then sextile Jupiter and Pluto and Saturn, of course. So those are all nice aspects too. The planet of love, beauty, women, the planet Jupiter, the planet of expansion, also weak in Capricorn. Um, Pluto, you know, Pluto, we all know Pluto and Capricorn here, destroying everything and Saturn ruling Capricorn. So uh, four sextiles in one day. Now, the moon will also trine Neptune. There's some beautiful, very optimistic, positive aspects today with the moon trining Neptune and Pisces. A good day to go to church, but you don't have to go to church. You can just be extremely spiritual wherever you are. Go for a walk in nature, you know, go reflect on water. You know, God is in the rain. I just saw that somewhere in a, in a film. Um, but God is everywhere and especially in nature. And so the more we immerse ourselves in nature, the better. And with the moon in Scorpio, it's water through the element of water. Good day to visualize, to meditate, to just receive. Um, it's very receptive energy today, images, dreams. Pay attention to your dreams when you wake up. Be conscious of what it is you're thinking, what energy you're putting out. Uh, the moon will also, in conjunct, retrograde Mars and Aries. Also, this happens early in the morning. May take the form of kind of angry dreams, frustration in your dreams, sexually frustrated dreams. So pay attention to that as well. Now, the sun, you know, the power of everything in our solar system here in Libra, where it's trying to be balanced and peaceful, and all of that relationship squares Saturn and Capricorn. So again, this all happens before, you know, it happens at 9.58 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So you might be kind of grumpy, you might sleep in. You know, Saturn slows everything down. There might be issues with your dad, or parenting, or fatherhood, or responsibility, or um, again, old family issues, skeletons. Saturn and Capricorn is skeletons a little bit, and so is Scorpio. So old family skeletons may come up and have to be dealt with. So try to be a peacekeeper in all of this um, change. Now, Venus opposite Neptune in Pisces. So this is a really beautiful aspect. Again, it happens 10.49 a.m. in the morning. Venus in Virgo, again, she's weak, not strong. She's not shining or brightest. She's shining pots in Virgo. Um, Venus in Virgo, though, very nitpicky, organized, little OCD, very real, very humble, very willing to serve, opposite her higher octave Neptune. Now, when Neptune was discovered in the late 1700s and upset the old order because the old order was all the planets that people could see with the naked eye, the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. So there was seven traditionally classical planets, quote unquote. And when they discovered Uranus that upset the whole thing, they didn't know what to do. So modern astrologers decided to make Uranus the higher octave of Mercury, the planet of communications. And Uranus then became associated with revolution, an invention because it was discovered with a telescope for the first time. So indicating man-made extension of our human eyes out into space and past the boundaries of Saturn. So when they discovered Neptune then later, they made Neptune the higher octave of Venus. And so Neptune is spiritual love, it's compassionate love, it's dreams, illusions, delusions, meditations, it's those highs. Um, it's going out of this world, literally. Uh, it's heaven, it's endings, it's karma, it's the secrets, it's the closet, it's the shadows, it's jail, it's being in quarantine, it's mental illness, it's paranoia, 
uh, it's addictions of all kinds. So especially people who are OCD, this can really make this act up because Virgo, Venus worries a lot. But so you want to escape things as well. But it could be a time when you really find uh, a way to meet uh, your soulmate, that other half of yourself that is really just still part of yourself. Um, it's also a good time to be creative in any form you'd like it to be. Uh, it's a time to make love, write poetry, paint, dance, sing, drum, make music, whatever it is that makes you feel great, that puts you in the sense of being connected, that you don't feel alone and you don't feel separate. Because ultimately, Pisces knows that we never really are. But be careful of any drugs, alcohol, anything you take, because your uh, immune system and your ability to um, fend any of that off your, is, is unbalanced. Okay, So you're projecting what you want to see. So just be careful with money, debts. Um, you know, Neptune, again, the escapism. So heightened sensitivity, especially with the Scorpio moon. Uh, but you can really see below the surface in a very deep way, always under a Scorpio moon. Um, so then the moon, that's the last aspect of the day. The moon goes void, of course, at 5.43 p.m. That's Eastern Daylight Time. And then the moon enters the optimistic last fire sign, Sage. And now we want to get philosophical. We need to have a sense of humor. We need to get ourselves out of the dark time. So here's where Sagittarius comes riding in the centaur to save the day. Uh, and then there's another heavy aspect, Mars retrograde in Aries squares Jupiter and Capricorn, 1038 p.m. That's Pacific daylight time. It will happen the next day in Eastern daylight and GMT. So Mars squaring Jupiter at this point, because all the energy is being drawn back, and I don't know about you, but I'm extremely tired. Um, and then Jupiter and Capricorn kind of slows things down anyway. So there can be, again, um, passive aggressive behaviors being magnified. Um, you know, it's just more of those cardinal square energies coming on, you know, that we've been dealing with. I just realized it's only maybe six or seven weeks to the end of the year. We're already starting to feel like we can see the end of 2020. Um, so you want to feel optimistic. Like we're almost at the end of it. It could be feeling like you're in the biggest crunch, of course, right now. So you can see in the chart, big grand trines there between this aspect here, Sedna, 28 Taurus, conjunct Algol. Again, she's the Inuit goddess with a very difficult story. Her father abandoned her, chopped off her fingers. Uh, she fell into the ocean. She became the queen of the ocean and all of the sea creatures. Um, but she's kind of lonely and the Inuit fishermen need to brush her hair. But she just seems to be standing out there at this point in time. You can see the Venus-Neptune opposition there. Um, and also, I wanted to mention that the big cardinal squares are still going on, of course, from the new moon. We're still kind of in that new moon energy. Um, the moon is still... Where is the moon? The moon is Scorpio. Sorry, the sun is still squaring uh, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn and Capricorn. And also opposing... Eris and Lilith at the 29th degree of Aries and Mars is in there too. So I'm a bit concerned about Lilith at the 29th degree of Aries because it's very intense energy. So again, all of anger, women feeling anger about not being able to speak their voice and being honored as being equals. And we are in Libra territory, so we want to make things equal. So if you want to get in touch with me, I'm at tarotarot.com. Please uh, subscribe to me here on YouTube. Follow me on my blog at infinitynow.wordpress. I'm on Twitter and Instagram too. Many blessings.